and welcome back to my channel. So when I used to make videos in Spanish, I used to make monthly favorite. I really like doing those, so I decided that I was gonna gather my favorite TV shows, books, or movies that I watched by myself without reacting to them to share them with you guys at the end of the month and that's what I'm gonna do today. So the very first movie that I watched in August was Nanny McPhee. I know I am super late for the party. I don't know why I never gave it a chance to Nanny McPhee. Like I just saw the poster back in the day <laughs> um, and I, I didn't like it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just didn't like it and so I decided not to give it a chance But if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I have a little just a little obsession with Thomas Brody Sangster just just very small obsession So I started to watch the movies that he have been in that I just never watched before and Nanny McPhee is one of them and I love Emma Thompson too so I really don't know why I never gave it a chance to Nanny McPhee, but when I watched it, oh my god, I, I cried. Like, I loved it so much. Emma Thompson does such an amazing job, as always, and so does Thomas. I love him. I love him so much. His pretty little face is just everything. But anyways, I'm pretty sure you know what the movie is about, so I'm not gonna explain it to you. <laughs> I watched is to all the boys I loved before. It was such a good movie. Like, I love romance, but I don't like predictable romance, although this movie was very, very predictable. Ah. Still, one of my best friends told me that I had to watch it. I actually thought it was a TV show for some reason, and then she told me that it was a movie, so I watched it right away. It's about this girl who writes five love letters to his five crushes. She didn't write them at the same time, she wrote them when the crushes were happening. He, she even addressed the letters, but she never sent them. It was like a way to vent, to let it out, which I think it's good. I've done it. Not letters, though. I have journals. <laughs> I used to write in my journals a lot when I was younger. But anyways, it's a good way to vent, right? But somehow the letters just get out into the world and they find out and the drama starts happening. It's a really cute teenage love story, I guess. And the third movie I watched this past August was Hurricane Bianca. I don't know if you're familiar with who Bianca del Rio is. She is my favorite drag queen. I, I love RuPaul too. She's my queen. But I don't see her as a drag queen anymore. <laughs> I just see her like the queen, the goddess. So Bianca del Rio is my favorite drag queen. And this movie is actually the second movie. That if you're into drag queens and comedy, you should definitely watch both movies. I don't know how to explain what the second movie is about without spoiling the first movie so you're just gonna have to go and watch it and if you're not really into drag queens it doesn't matter just watch it it's a really really fun movie Bianca del Rio is such a great comedian I love her she's super funny and I'm sure you're gonna like the movie so moving on to the shows the first one I watched this past month was Switched it's a Japanese show where there is your typical fat ugly misunderstood girl and your typical popular thin beautiful girl right but the fat ugly one is as ugly on the inside as she is on the outside i guess she wants the life of the popular girl she wants the guy of the popular girl she wants to be the popular girl so she discovers this um like ritual or something that has to do with the red moon or something like that i don't remember correctly because i watched it in the beginning of the month and it's already September 1st and she does it right and they they switch bodies they hated her in her own body right the fat ugly one but when she is the thin popular pretty girl they still hate her because she is the same on the inside and her ugliness is coming from the inside and not from the outside so everybody starts loving the ugly girl that now has the pretty girl inside because she is really nice and funny and tries to get along with everybody and it's, it's, she's just friendly and the other girl is just not she she wanted her life but she didn't realize that if you want to be pretty on the outside you have to be pretty on the inside too you know but anyways i'm not giving away 
the whole show. Trust me, there is a lot more to it. So if you want to watch it, please go ahead. It is really good. I loved it. Second show I watched is The House of the Flower, or in Spanish, because it is a Mexican soap opera, I guess. It's called La Casa de las Flores, and it is so good. I decided to watch it because there is a Venezuelan actress in the, in the show. She was in a very popular Venezuelan TV show years and years ago. I never really liked it, but I started to follow her because she became a YouTuber and I liked her videos. So recently she said that she was in this show, so I decided to watch it, right? Her character, we see her like three times. <laughs> but the show is really good. It's pretty much like Desperate Housewives, you know, like one of the characters commit suicide and then that character that died is the one narrating the episodes. As a Desperate Housewife lover, I cannot compare the two shows because obviously I'm going to pick Desperate Housewives. <laughs> but this show is really good. It's about a family who are like like the Kardashians, like they're so perfect and they get the, their picture taken for magazines and like everybody loves them. But the family has this secret where the husband had a lover who is the one that commits suicide and he actually had like a whole family on the side. They call it the little house. I don't know if that's actually a thing. We don't do that here. I don't know if it's only in Mexico or, or it's like worldwide, but it's the first time I heard that they call the little house and the big house. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of, I guess, sex and things. It just, it's really funny and entertaining for real. So if you're into soap operas like Desperate Housewives, you're gonna like this one. And the third show I watched is Insatiable. Now this show had a lot of hate and I don't know why. Like it's about a girl who used to be fat and then she got thin and she, everybody started to like her and everybody wanted to be with her and she got popular and you know, Typical, but people complain because you don't have to be thin to be popular and to get everybody to like you Which is true, but it's, it's, it's just you know the humor that the show has and I don't Really mind like I find it funny. There used to be a lot more dark humor in TV shows back in the day and nobody would say anything, nobody would get offended. Nowadays everybody gets offended by anything and I don't freaking get it like just enjoy the freaking show so yeah the character for some reason she loses a lot of weight and so she gets thin and hot and beautiful and she thinks that she can eat the world she's gonna start getting everything she wants but girl is insatiable it's also a really fun show with drama and comedy especially comedy i hate the main character the fat one that now it's hot i don't like her character, I hate her, but she's very freaking entertaining. Now moving on to books, I have been reading my mangas. I used to go to the US a lot, so I bought a bunch of mangas, but at that time I didn't really understand English, so I would just go through the pages without reading anything because I couldn't understand. And so I decided that I wanted to read this specific manga, it's called Mermaid Melody. I watched the anime when I was like 13 or something, a long time ago. And I loved it and I bought the manga, as I said, years ago, like 11 years ago or something. And I never read it, I just went through the pages without really understanding anything. But now that I started to read it, I'm in like volume 4 or something. Now that I started to read it, it's a lot like the anime, but it's like a lot faster too, you know, there's not really any feeling episodes, I don't know how they're called in English, but yeah, I, I love it. It's also really weird because they're like 13, right? And her 13th birthday, it's like this huge celebration, they're mermaids, if you didn't get that part by the title. They get this big celebration because they turn into adults and then one of the mermaids is like, oh yeah, now you're gonna be able to do these things with your boyfriend. And then she shows her a book and it's, it, it, she starts like bl bleeding through the nose. Like it's, it's like a sutra or something. I don't know. It's like, it's something I'm guessing a little girl shouldn't read or maybe it's just me. I don't 
Mm. So far, I'm loving the manga. I already watched the anime. And the last book I read this past month is Pet Cemetery. I watched the movie a hell of a long time ago, and it actually traumatized me, but I loved it. I wanted to see what the book was about, so when I lived in the US I bought it, but I never read it because I'm, I'm one of those people who would buy and buy and buy and buy books, but would end up always reading the same ones that they already read before, like, I have all these new books that I haven't read, I'm gonna read Peter Pan again, you know what I'm saying? But since I decided to share my favorites monthly with you guys, I decided to add a book. Uh, hoping that I can read it within a month. So yeah, this is a way to pressure me to read new books that I haven't read. And I picked Pet Cemetery for last month and it was so good. The end of the book is pretty open. It's not like in the movie. I like actually better the movie ending than the book ending for some reason. And I don't really remember how my favorite character dies in the movie. I think it's a little different from the way he dies in the book. If you know me, you know who I'm talking about. If you have seen the movie, you know who Jude is. I love the man. So when I got to the part where I knew he was gonna die, I couldn't, like, I couldn't read for like two days. I didn't want to see it. I, I was so scared. What if it was different? What if, what if I cried, you know? I was, I was just scared. I cried a little bit and I don't really remember how he dies in the movie. But the way he dies in the book, it's pretty bad. Same as the mom, they die pretty bad. Wow, it's a really scary, scary book. I have always loved Stephen King's movies, like based on his books. And I have a friend who is actually the one that got me into Stephen King's movies more than I used to be because I watched it and Pet Cemetery and Cujo and stuff when I was really young, like really really young. But with this friend we started to like get together to watch Stephen King's movies and stuff like that. So the love like grew. But he told me that he started to read Pet Cemetery and that he didn't like it, that the way Stephen King writes, it's really slow and it's very detailed and like he fell asleep. It is very detailed and that's not always bad. It can get a little boring sometimes, but the, the, the chapters are just... You're not gonna fall asleep, okay? You're just not. It's... I don't know. Now I can say from experience that I love the way Stephen King writes. I love it. It's a very scary book. Now I'm going for it, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. If you get the chance to read Pet Cemetery, please do. Or watch the movie. But anyways, these are all the favorite movies and shows and books that I read this past month of August. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know in the comments if you have seen these shows and movie or read the books or a manga. And as always, I'm Sarah Miana and I'll see you in my next video. I am Peter Pan, I'll never be a man If you never wanna grow, take my hand I'll take you to Neverland I am Peter Pan, I'll never be a man If you never wanna grow, take my hand I'll take you to Neverland